Abdul Razak Gurna, warmly welcome. Thank you. Um, the headline for this talk is Perspectives of Life, which is good because we can talk about anything, um, including death, I guess. As you wish. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you received, as Adam just mentioned, the Nobel Prize in Literature in 2021. And um, when, when you receive a Nobel Prize, there is also a motivation to it. And this one is formulated by the Swedish Academy. Uh, so you received uh, the Nobel Prize for your uncompromising and compassionate penetration of the effects of colonialism and the fate of the refugee in the gulf between cultures and continents. Um, I'm thinking again of the title of this uh, talk. Uh, do you think that another description of what you as a writer might do would be to give us readers um, perspectives of life through your novels? Oh, sure, yeah. I mean, uh, that's the whole... That's another way of thinking about uh, describing what writing is for, as I see it. That is to say, um, there is clearly different kinds of writing. We've just been hearing about that. But for me, writing is about what I see and what's in front of me. And perspectives on life would be another formulation which, which uh, says the same thing. Incidentally, that uh, citation that you quoted there, um, it's been repeated to me so many times that I think now I could probably s s say it for you next time you need to. <laughs> but you know anyway. it by heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've just heard it yeah. a lot. But sure, perspectives on life is a pretty good way of thinking about what, what writing is about, I think. You grew up on, on Zanzibar and you, you, you left Zanzibar when you were a young man. 18, uh, and you went to UK, and there you started to write. But how come you, how come? Why writing? Well, uh, writing was always something that uh, I found pleasurable to do. Um, but also, I think for a lot of us, um, even those people who would not think of what they do as writing, for a lot of us, writing is um, a, sometimes a useful way of um, just disentangling um, ideas or feelings. Maybe this is truer for, for younger people. I don't know. Certainly it was truer for me when I was young, that, uh, younger, uh, that, uh, that sometimes just writing things down uh, clarified uh, what was going on. Sometimes it's also pleasurable in a dark way. So maybe this is what uh, the previous panel was talking about. Uh, sometimes when it's snowing or gloomy or miserable and it's miserable inside as well, then writing that misery out is actually quite pleasurable in a way. Uh, you know, all the self-pity flowing out and you know, the, the misery and so on. So, and it was a pretty miserable time uh, for me because uh, I think being, being a stranger uh, and young and, you know, poor, um, f the lots of possibilities for misery and all of that. Uh, so anyway, that's how it started, just writing things down, trying to uh, work it out. Um, and then at a certain point, uh, I found myself fictionalizing this, making a story out of it. And so it went on. And when doing so, then when fictionalizing it, did, did you know what you were going to write about? I mean, in, in the motivation that you know by heart, uh, colonialism and refugees are, are mentioned. Was that from the very beginning, the themes that you felt, this is what I'm going to do? No, I didn't know. I mean, in, the, in that process that I've been describing is of that kind of writing I don't think is intended for anybody else to see, or at least I didn't intend for anybody else to see. Um, but when a, the, the point when it arrives, the realization, I mean, when it arrives, arrives that um, I'm going to, to show this to somebody, um, 
then I think that's a different, different process. Even in the mind, that's a different process because you have to shape it in a certain way. You have to organize it in a way that would be able to be receivable in a way to, to, by, uh, by somebody else. Um, and I think I certainly imagine that the somebody else would not be somebody who would be uh, necessarily sympathetic and saying, oh, oh well, that's good. I imagine somebody who would be critical, who would say, so what is this? You know? So in other words, it had to be something that conveyed both what needed, from, as, from my point of view, that needed to be said, but also that would also be persuasive to, to others. Um, and I didn't necessarily have a subject other than myself at that time, yeah. <laughs> you know, as, as, the, as the topic of this, because I'm still st sorting things out. I'm still trying to understand the two main things that I think that were significant and important to, to me and I think to people in the circumstances that I was in. As I said, I use this word stranger. I prefer to describe that condition. Uh, as being a stranger rather than being an immigrant or being a refugee or asylum seeker or whatever, because that's the, the, the most important uh, feeling, was being a stranger in a place, clearly, that is not your home, but also in the process reflecting on, on your home or on what has been left behind. So those are the two things that I was, the two... Uh, entanglements, I suppose, that I was trying to disentangle. What is it like? What, is, what does it mean to be here? What does it mean to have left where I left? And there's plenty there to keep uh, a young mind busy. Mm. I, I'm thinking about um, the writer Toni Morrison, who, who, who said uh, something like, uh, when she um, started out writing, she She's, she thought that she wanted to write a book that she would have liked to read in the sense that it would uh, be about, uh, for her, relevant uh, and recogniz recognizable uh, persons. Uh, so she wrote this, The Bluest Eyes, which is about a little poor uh, African-American girl that no one bothered to write about before Toni Morrison did so. Um, can you... Um, recognize yourself in that mission to write about people without uh, the, the loud voice throughout history, uh, literature history? Yes, um, very much so. I've, when I uh, started writing, or during that period in the 19, um, late 1970s, 80s, there was a, a fair amount of uh, new writing coming out of uh, Africa and the Caribbean and India. People were thinking, reflecting, investigating uh, both uh, colonialism and the, the processes of decolonization and nationhood and so on. Um, but it didn't seem to me that um, anybody was writing about the experiences of the world that I knew, that I came from. Even the experience of colonialism or the experience of the earlier, the pre-colonial experiences. There seemed to be, nobody was writing about our part of the world. No, nobody was writing about the kinds of things that were important to our part of the world. So there was definitely something about that too, a desire um, to, to make it known. Uh, as a way, not so much of saying, know about us because we're interesting, but as a way of saying, no, it's not all like that. There is this as well. Um, and this is also true of writing about, um, of writing about the experience of uh, colonialism, or if you like, the encounter with, uh, with European colonialism, again, for the part of the world that I know, or for things that I know about. Um, the importance of that is not really to um, to blame or to say this is what was done to us, but it's really to say that the narrative that exists about that process is incomplete. And this is what has not been said, I suppose. This is not this or that or the other. This has not been uh, written about 
let's put the narrative, let's complete the narrative, and in some cases, let's correct the narrative, because uh, there are, as I'm sure you all know, there are various self-justifying, um, self-forgiving um, narratives associated with, uh, with the, uh, the enterprise of colonialism. Um, and it's important to say, no, that's, that's duplicity, that's lies. So the, the, uh, I think of writing as a very, very, I think of a novel, should I say, but I think of writing a novel as a very complex process, which is not about doing one thing or other thing. And I think when, when I read, I also am aware that that's what I'm reading. I'm not reading a novel or a story because I want just simply to have the pleasure of reading something well done. I want that. I don't read it only because I want to learn something. Well, I do. Uh, and I also don't just read because I want to be reassured about things I know about, although I'm happy to be reassured. But all of those things happen. Um, I don't read because I want to be challenged by what I read, but that happens too. So I think that all of that is also part of the process of writing. So there are all of these things. We write, I write about things I know. I discover things as I write. But very much the idea is uh, the things in front of me, things I see, untruths, injustice, unkindness, love, affection. That's writing. And, and in your books, we, we, we uh, get to know many individuals with, with their own specific experiences and, and, and uh, losses and sorrows and, and, and um, joys. Uh, but they also mirror, speaking on complexity, uh, the um, uh, st uh, structure or structures and systems. Um, and, and also speaking about your process as a writer, if you're thinking of some, if you're thinking of a story, do you look at, is it all intertwined? Do you look at, I want to write about him, or do you, do you think this, this is the system, the structure that I want to enlighten through these individuals? I don't know, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's, often I begin with uh, an idea, like it might be, for example, the most recent uh, novel, After Lives. It, I knew I wanted to write about that episode, that historical episode, uh, the 1914-18 uh, conflict, as it happened in um, what was then called Deutsche Ostafrika. I knew that because I had something I'd been wanting to do for a while. So that's the beginning of, of the, you know, how the, the thing, and then how to shape it comes slowly and I also knew I wanted somebody who had been through the experience of war. In other words, a man, a soldier, I mean, in that sense, who had experienced a conflict in that sense. But I also want, knew I wanted to write about how these events were nothing to do with the people who lived there. In other words, the conflict was nothing to do with them. Uh, it was to do with Europeans uh, fighting a war, but in another place altogether. Um, and the various ironies that began to appear. So the, the, the starting idea is clear enough, but how to populate it and how to, to dramatize it in a sense, to make it something that uh, somebody can read rather than a history uh, narrative or something like that, That's, that takes a little while and a little bit of maneuvering and reshaping and organizing and so on, which is what is fun about writing. Um, again, the motivation, uh, the word compassionate is mentioned, and, and uh, there is, a, according to me, uh, there is a great deal of compassion in, in, your, in your novels. Uh, is it, is it uh, necessary for you to understand your characters, to, 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 that they make sense? In, uh... Well, it's not very difficult to, to be compassionate if you're writing... Uh, if, if you're writing about people who are not great egotists, who are not very well off, who are not you know, presidents and heroes, um, 
which are the people I write about, um, generally. And it's, it's, it's uh, difficult, I think, to not see that most people are capable of both kindness, um, as well as perhaps a bit of uh, maybe unthinking malice or maybe thinking malice. In other words, we're, most people are uh, complicated in this way. And the complication is precisely that they, they have, th there are these uh, qualities in them, both, both qualities of generosity as well as perhaps of calculation and uh, selfishness and all of that. Knowing that, you know, it's not hard to be compassionate. We both listened to, and, and, and many with us, uh, to uh, this year's Nobel Prize laureate in literature, Annie Ernaud, the other day when she had her Nobel lecture. And she said um, that she, uh, for many years ago, wrote in her diary that uh, I will write to avenge my people. And in, in, that, in her case, um, um, calling herself an immigrant, stranger than maybe in her own country. Uh, I guess she's referring then to, to the class trip that she has done. Can you re relate to, to this avenge feeling that she, she then early in her life um, formulated? It's a stronger word than I would use, I think. Avenge, I would say, against whom? Um, but there, there was, as I think I hinted at earlier in saying there wasn't the, this what was being written about didn't, we didn't figure, or I didn't figure in that. Uh, it's, so I would use a, a less angry word, I think, than avenge. I would say that it was important to say, this is how we live, or lived. But not only that, of course, but this is how we travel as well, and this is how we end up uh, when we do so. But yes, to say that, that there is a, a, a a way of uh, looking at the world, which, w which I think I'm capable of exposing about the way we live, as it were. Earlier on, there was a discussion about stories. Now, to me, stories are not, uh, amongst other things, stories are also a world view. A story also expresses how you, the storyteller, and perhaps your audience also, um, how you view the world. Uh, and if there is an aspect of it, and there are many, uh, that is not yet known, then that's a motivation for writing. Now, if Annie Arnaud wants to call that a vengeance, that's fine. But I, as I say, I think of, think of it perhaps less angrily than that. But there is something to say, you have not, we have not yet heard this story. Um, but I'm going to tell you. We are running out of time. Uh, Thank you so much, Abdul Razak Gurna, and thank you for widening our worlds with um, your perspectives. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.